Here we go. Okay, so um, welcome to TCU, Jennifer Darling, uh, marketing, sales, and social media consultant and expert. Hi. Hey, Guy. Thank you so much for having me today. All right. Very good. Thank you for coming in. So um, if an average student asked you, Jennifer, what is the difference between LinkedIn and any other social media platform? What would you tell them? I love this question. It's so good because LinkedIn is so different than any other social media platform you're going to touch. So I, I love social media. It's so much fun. Um, but Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever, whatever, just name the list. Those are all really consumer-based social media platforms. LinkedIn is the only platform that is especially made for business-to-business -business marketing and also for job seeking. So I think LinkedIn has really two purposes. And for all of you who are watching this, at any one time, it may be one of the other purposes that you're using it for. LinkedIn's known for job seeking. So we already know that. It's where recruiters go. It's one of the top two sites recruiters and um, employers go to look for possible candidates for their positions. And we're in a really tight um, job market right now. So they are looking at your LinkedIn profile probably before you even know it. And you wanna make sure you have an excellent profile there. Now, the second part is building your personal and professional brand. Boy, do I wish that I had LinkedIn when I was graduating from college, because that would have been the time at which I would have started to build my professional brand and build my network. And in doing that, you are going to really catapult and sky, skyrocket your business for your life. So both the job seeking and the personal branding part, the marketing part of LinkedIn, I think are, are valuable for you. And that's very different than, let's say, TikTok, which is super fun. Um, but you're not having a business conversation necessarily around TikTok. It doesn't mean you can't reach businesses on TikTok. That doesn't mean that at all. It just means that LinkedIn is especially designed for that. And okay. it's not necessarily a consumer medium. It is a business to business medium. Perfect. So let's talk about those two elements, right? The one is uh, developing your personal brand and the other one is professional networking. Uh, so Jennifer, you, you have a lot of experience, you've guided many clients. What are the three things to keep in mind when developing one's personal brand on LinkedIn? Absolutely. So the three things are the very first thing you need to do is you need to create an exceptional profile. Now, I, I want to share my screen, Guy, if that's okay with you, if you can set me up there to show you what a professional wow looking profile is like. People aren't going to go to your profile unless they see something in their newsfeed or unless they're searching for you. And then they're going to go land over on your profile. And when they do, you want to make sure that they see an exceptional person, whether you're a job seeker or you're marketing your company later when you own your own company, you're marketing your company. Feel free to share. You're a All right. So let's go ahead and do that. And so there's some really specific things that I take a look at. Um, oh, I might have to jump around here a second, um, that I take a look at whenever we are building a LinkedIn profile. And I'm going to go to my profile and, and we'll look at my profile just to show you, for example. So the very first thing that you want to do is create a banner that's going to get your audience's attention. And I'm going to say the word target market, your target's attention. And the reason I'm using that word is because if you're job seeking, your target market is a recruiter or whoever the person is that's going to be hiring you. That's your target market. Once you have, re have a job, maybe you are going to be in sales at some point in your life or you're going to be in marketing, that person is the target market is whomever outside of the organization you're trying to reach. So you want to create a banner that's going to attract their attention. A lot of people will create a banner that just has a picture. Well, that does not have a marketing message. So you want to create a marketing message on your banner. And also, I would highly suggest that you research the meaning of brand colors. So you can Google search the psychology of brand colors and pick out your own personal brand colors for um, the colors that mean what you represent in, in the business world. So that's thing number one. And what I do is I call this the top three things in your profile that you absolutely must nail to get them to want to scroll down and read more about you. The second thing, and equally as important, is a headshot. You want to get a professional headshot. It's going to cost you a little bit of money. 
Um, until you go and get a professional one, you could take one with a light background, nothing, you know, noisy like this, like guys background is fine because it's, it's solid background. Get a professional picture that is, um, it is close up. So it just should be your shoulders and your head because scientifically your face and your eyes are the first thing that people are going to resonate with and build trust. So if you have a picture where you're looking a different way, or you have a bunch of stuff in your picture, they're not going to be able to connect with you as quickly. And scientifically, we want that connection automatically. I mean, we only really have one second here. They used to say it takes seven seconds to build a first impression. Well, here on LinkedIn, it's like one second because I can see it and then I'm gonna move on. So that's the second thing. <clears throat> the third thing here is you wanna have a really good headline. Now a headline is not just what your job title is um, or what your, your major is or anything like that. A headline is what are you gonna do for your target market? So if you are gonna, or if you're job seeking, what is the impact you're gonna make on the organization that you wish to work for? That's what you wanna start with, then followed by any titles that you wanna have in here. And if you wanna make it a little bit more fun, add one little fun thing about you at the end. So I particularly happen to love cardio drumming before I've had dog mom, and I have had hundreds of people comment on that little fun piece. So put a little piece of your personality in there. So those top three things are really important. Now. Then you're going to go down to the about section. Now, mine is a little bit different than what yours is going to look like. Your about section is going to be higher. I am in creator mode because I have an influencer position and I write a lot of articles and I put out a lot of content. So mine are organized a little bit different than yours would. And we could talk about that too, Guy, if we have time. But then this about section I take a different approach to this about section than most people do. Now, my background is 25 years in sales and marketing, so I'm all about capturing the audience, whoever my target market is, to want them to read more. So what I write my about section, uh, the way I write it is about them. So whoever your target market is, I address that like, like it's an individual person. Why would they want to hire me? What are their concerns in the world? Um, what do they want this position, this person to do in this position? That's how I address this. I don't start with all about me. Like I have 25 years of sales experience. I'm an author two times. Blah, 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 blah. I think people care about what contribution you're going to make to them first. And then they'll continue going on. And that's where you can go in your experience. They're going to scroll down more. And now this is where you talk about how you are uniquely qualified um, based on your uh, education, based on your experience, based on your personality, based on your skills, and based on your unique strengths. Those things need to go in this experience section. So complete that to as much, um, with as much detail as you possibly can. And then I'll just add one more thing for the job seekers here. Uh, you'll want to fill out your complete profile because every little section uh, a recruiter is going to be looking at. So education, um, licensing and certification, so any continuing things you've done, uh, any volunteer work that you've been a part of, put that in here. And most especially, make sure you go into your skills and you can click on this plus sign here and add every possible sp skill you can um, imagine in here because the skills are what the recruiters put in to match you, your profile with their job opening. So just you click add a skill and you start typing in and just as many as you possibly can up to 50 different skills. If you want, you can even re resort those um, so that they can see the top three. That is not necessary for you because they're gonna, they're gonna use algorithms that are gonna pull you up um, based on the skills that you have in here. And then um, I think testimonials are the most powerful way that anyone can market themselves. And so you can ask for testimonials from anybody. They could be from your professors. They could be from your colleagues, people who you work together in a group. A lot of times we think of testimonials or recommendations of client testimonials or recommendations, but not in LinkedIn. They can be that, but they don't have to be. 
So here in recommendations, go and start to um, think of the groups you're working in. Maybe you're working in a, um, a study group together with uh, uh, other students. Go and give them a recommendation and ask them for a recommendation, speaking to how you worked together in the group. And then you will all help each other in this way by getting recommendations. So those are the biggest things. That's like my, my very quick um, <laughs> overview of what to do in the profile. It's quite a lot, but once you do these things, you're pretty much set on the profile and now your work begins with engaging other people. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, from branding to content creation strategy on LinkedIn. Yes, so I believe that everybody on the earth has the opportunity to become a thought leader. So whatever it is, the air, whatever area you're studying, and rather it's an area you're studying now, and maybe you're going to change in 10 years or 20 years. I mean, I've been in marketing my whole life, but you know, the nuances of my business have changed. I do a lot of leadership training as well. You want to start to put your opinion out there in the world about what it means to be in whatever field that you're going to be in. And you can do that in several different ways. You can curate content, which means that you're going to go find content from other resources. For example, uh, I love Harvard Business Review. So often I'll be in Harvard Business Review. I'll find articles in Harvard Business Review that relate to the topics that I speak about, sales, marketing, leadership, attitude. And I will post those articles in my LinkedIn profile. And then I'll write a couple of sentences to give my spin on it. Do I agree with it? Do I disagree with it? What would I add? What would I delete, add your opinion to that piece. That's one easy way to get content out of there, out there and be a resource for people. Now you can also write your own content, which is challenging for some people writing, but you have been writing for like at least four years now. So you've already had, you already have your pencil sharpened, your computer keyboard is warmed up. So start writing. Um, articles that are 350 words or more will help you with the SEO. So you want to write an article that's, I say about 500 words. One, it helps you with SEO, but two, whenever you write an article, now what magically happens is on the bottom of the article, it says how long it takes to read the article. And I'm convinced that articles that are long, nobody's going to read them because in social media, we're skimmers. So if I open up one article and it's seven minutes and I open up the next articles right below it and it's two minutes, which one am I going to read? The two minute one, of course. So you want to have those short articles, about 500 words are really good. Articles are great, but also posts that are just text only posts work very well in LinkedIn. A story, a life lesson. I just did a, a story. You can look at my LinkedIn for different types of stories, but I did a story about how I went away on vacation and how I really needed that vacation to recharge my battery for my business. So in LinkedIn, remember it's business to business and business to business professional. So even if you have a personal story, if you can take that and position it with language that is a lesson in the business world, you have a home run. So that's the second kind of, I call them power posts. I have four power posts. An article that you publish using LinkedIn's publisher. Also, when you do that, that article is searchable on Google, Yahoo, and Bing. So it's no longer just inside LinkedIn. It's actually searchable outside of that. No other social media platform allows you to do that, um, with the exception of uh, YouTube, but that's just video versus articles. The second I just said was a short story post, which is a regular post, um, but it's written in a format of a story from a story with a lesson. The third one is what I call documents. So you can literally create PowerPoints that you can upload into LinkedIn using the documents feature and they look like really cool flip books. When you do that, LinkedIn publishes them out more and people engage on them because they actually have to click on the each page to get it to move. So you know your engagement is really good there. Now you can go look under my documents tab. So if you go look at my activity, you look under my good documents tab, you're gonna see all activity. You're gonna see um, articles, you're gonna see posts and you're gonna see documents. In fact, I'll just share it right now. <clears throat> the documents get a ton of views. I actually, I need to do one. I haven't done one in a little bit. So let me click here, documents. So you'll see right here, six tips to get more engagement on LinkedIn and a very simple document, very low text, little text, because we're going to just click through. I always add an about me section at the end and also a call to action on how people can hire me because I'm marketing my business here, not 
looking for a job. But you might put a, an about you and a call to action, which is how to hire you, how to get a hold of you, why they want to hire you. That would work. So see even this one, 1,200 views of this particular article. And I can click on the analytics here. This is a little bit old, so it's not going to show it. But typically the analytics, if it was um, newer, I could see what companies are looking at my, my information. Am I applying for that company and they're looking at my information? That's a really good sign. Okay, so the fourth kind of power post is video. Um, short video. Nobody likes long video. Um, I'm convinced that's why people love TikTok because it's such, you know, very short video. And I sold television advertising for NBC, CBS, all the major networks for 20 years. And we sold 30 second commercials. That's too long sometimes for social media, unless you have really great content and you're a really great speaker. So do short videos. People get on and they do these long videos and nobody on LinkedIn is going to watch a long video. I shouldn't say nobody. Like somebody will, but more people will watch a short, sweet, simple message than, uh, than how long, watch Jennifer? A long 15 to 30 seconds or a yeah, I mean, if you can make a video 15 seconds, that's perfect. Um, I would say up to 60 seconds to 90 seconds. In fact, Lee, um, somebody just did some research and what they found was slightly over a minute on LinkedIn, people stopped watching. So under 60 seconds. If you wanna make a long format video, put it on YouTube because that's what people are there for is watching video on YouTube. Fantastic, Jennifer, for the sake of time, I know you're a busy, um, busy lady today. The third component, which is, well, first of all, for posts, Hashtags and tagging people. Can you speak about those? Hashtags up to five, no more. In fact, the current research show that over five hashtags reduce the visibility of your post. So no more than five hashtags. The other thing is, if you put too many hashtags, that's not content. That's just, you're making a post searchable based on words. So people start to glaze over your content. They're like, well, this is like 30 hashtags. There's no meaningful, relevant content in there and people stop looking. So three to five hashtags. Tagging people only when it's relevant. I hate to be tagged when it's not relevant. So if you wanna say, oh, I just saw a guy and Jennifer talk about LinkedIn today and you tag me in that post, that's relevant. But if you write a post about sunshine and unicorns and rainbows and you tag me, that's not relevant. And then that's just kind of, you're, you're cheating to get into my newsfeed and and mucking up my space because I'm a busy professional and I don't have time for rainbows and unicorns. Well, unless I'm on vacation, then maybe I do, but not in a normal setting, Perfect. right? So only when it's relevant. All right. Perfect. Let's uh, go to the final uh, issue the for today. third thing. Oh, go ahead, yeah. Right? Yeah, third, third thing, thing, engagement. So we talked yes. about the profile. We talked about post engagement. So the best way to engage people is in their newsfeed. So you can definitely reach out to people. You definitely want to grow your network. You, you want more people in your network without a doubt. But if you want to get people's attention, the best way to do that is to engage in their posts on their newsfeed and engage in a re relevant, meaningful way. A lot of times what I see is people will find a target person, let's just say, you know, recruiter or client, remember, um, or, or media person or uh, I mean, there could be lots of different kinds of targets, any kind of stakeholder. You find that person and they make a post and then you put great job, nice work, good idea. That is just being in the sea of sameness along with everyone else. So don't do that. My recommendation instead is to read their post, watch their video, read their article and find something meaningful in that article that you resonate with. And then when you resonate with it, you can write about it back to them. And if you make your comment and you add another question and you get that post engaged back and forth, that conversation back and forth, you'll really, sky, you'll really sky, skyrocket that post and you'll really get their attention. That's the best way, I think, to engage with others. Fantastic. And I love the concept of sea of sameness. We have to stand out with our own personal brand and have a unique and relevant conversation with our unique and relevant stakeholders. Perfect. Jennifer, I learned so much and there is so much more to cover. But for today, uh, I'm going to end this conversation right here. And thank you so much for coming in today and sharing your vast knowledge with our students. You're welcome. All right. Have a fantastic day. You're welcome. Day. Thanks, Guy. Bye-bye. And, and if people want to connect with you outside of LinkedIn, other places you want them to connect? Yeah, so first off, I should say, when you connect with me on LinkedIn, my unique 
URL is Jennifer Darling Speaks. So make sure it's not the regular Jennifer Darling, it's Jennifer Darling Speaks. Um, and then you can also connect with me if you would like to send me an email. It's Jennifer at JenniferDarlingSpeaks.com. Perfect. All right, Jennifer. Thanks so much. Have a fantastic day. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.